Digital twin tooling, when built only once, will greatly impact program visualization now and for all your future programs. It's a crucial step to achieve confidence in your programs hitting the floor. Machine components, fixturing, tooling all combine to paint a picture of success. So let's look at a few basics for lathe tooling. So now that we've loaded the machine and set up our part and workpiece inside of the machine, we want to set up some tooling on the turret. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have our tool assemblies tab visible. And on your ribbon, you want to be on the home and come over to the right and go to show hide and make sure that tool assemblies here is checked. If this is checked, this should be visible somewhere on your screen. And at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and switch to the machine view, and you'll see in a moment why. Uh, and really quick, just to recap, if you skip the last video, you can switch your, uh, your machine. This is how you switch between the part view and the machine view. There's a little icon here at the upper left corner of your graphics area. But if you uh, look at the top right here, you have this float view icon. So if I switch to the machine view and I click on float view, it will create a separate window for me that I can you know, resize or I can make it a full screen. Another thing that you can do is you can drag this over to another monitor. And if you bring this into another monitor, you can view your entire simulation and your part view simultaneously on your computer system. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to obviously leave everything on one uh, embedded view here. So we're going to be in the machine view. And the first thing that we want to do here is load a static tool onto our turret. So under the tool assemblies tab, on your machine, you'll see positions for tools. Since this is a lathe, we have multiple tool positions. So we're gonna right click on station one and pick add adaptive item. So here we are gonna go to our data folder and I'm gonna go to holders. I'm gonna come down here to WTO and just pick a static tool that fits for this machine. So we have all these tools listed that are already created. Um, Windows does have a preview. Um, you can hide that, you can turn it on here, but you can take a preview of the different holders that you might want to load onto the machine if the nomenclature uh, doesn't immediately make sense to you. So looking at some of these, if I want to load a particular tool holder, uh, we can do that here. So let's go ahead and start with, I'm just going to start with this one and we're going to kind of reposition and looking at the masks of the machine, here we can slide this drag bar up and down to turn on or off the kind of major components of the machine. So this is really nice in being able to quickly change the uh, view that you're looking at. Additionally, we can uh, go to solid or completely transparent, and I'm gonna leave this kind of mid-plane. So if I also want to turn off any particular component and not use the slider bar, so in other words, I'm gonna leave my machine on, but I wanna turn off the turret, you can see here that I can turn off the individual components using this visibility icon here. So we're gonna turn off the machine, and we can get a better view of our turret and the holder positioning this way. So looking at it, this is the position that it comes in. And if you followed any of the tutorials to make your holders on the YouTube uh, Esprit Cam channel, there is a playlist for the tutorials. There's about 40 or 50 uh, tutorials on making holders. So definitely check that out. Um, here we have a static holder. This is to hold a square shank face tool. So we're gonna come over here and just say, okay. And actually, let me double click this. You can double click and edit this. And just to show, you can enter in rotational uh, values. So here we flip it around. Um, you know, we can also translate 
or move things. So if I move this one inch, sorry, negative one off, I can see that the uh, holder can mo be moved in space to, if it doesn't, you know, come in or if you don't have your particular holder, maybe it's not available. Some of the OEMs don't have everything available. So you can kind of fudge some things for the time being until everything is available online and more and more OEMs are producing their products as solid, you know, simple step solids that you can uh, create a GDML for inside of the simulation. So we're going to say OK. And at this point, we can right click on this adaptive item and we can select from a milling or a lathe tool. So we're going to come to a turning tool and the turning uh, tool dialog box is going to come up. So I'm going to go through this very quickly, just the major functions here, the name. We'll call this a face, you know, 80 degree or something, uh, maybe main. <clears throat> tool number one, it's an inch tool. Simulation color, what do I want to do here? Uh, do I want the bright green or do I want something gray? We'll just call it gray. Uh, coolant on or off, tool shift, you can move the tool in the holder from its original position here if you wanted to. So that is up to you. If we go to the holder tab, uh, what we can do here is pick from a square or a round shank. We're going to leave it as a square shank. This is a, a left or right handed uh, selection here so we can see the tool flips over. Here uh, we have the sizing of the tool shank. So I'm going to leave everything at one inch. Uh, but if we have like a 20 millimeter, uh, you can see the values will change dynamically on the screen. So we can see that that doesn't quite fit into this particular holder's pocket. So we're going to go back to one inch there. And, um, you know, you could change the length of the tool. If I have a four and a half, <clears throat> four and a half inch shank there, we can change the, the uh, distance that the tip of the insert is. Uh, so depending on whatever you have for your, uh, you know, tool assembly, you can build that here. Now, if you have a Capto style holder that you wanted to use, um, you can utilize that. And what you would want to do is basically zero out all of this stuff. So if I set these to zero, you'll see that my insert is by itself at the tool position. So what we're going to do is just go back to a one inch for that and leave that alone. Uh, and if you've, uh, if you've followed the tutorial for making Capto tools, those tutorials typically all have a little one minute, two minute um, section at the very end on how to set up a tool and utilize that holder. So definitely make sure that you watch those to the end. There's plenty of information in those tutorials on specific holder types, uh, clamping units, you know, all of that stuff. So if you have a particular tool, uh, we're just going over the simple uh, commands here. Definitely check all that stuff out. And then on the insert tab, this is your sizing and type of insert. You know, you can select it here. Um, this is going to be a 3 8 insert diameter, which is fine. Um, 32 thou nose angle or uh, radius. So we are good to go. We're going to go ahead and say OK. And we can see that our tool is populated at station number one. And eventually, once you've got all your tools in there, you should be able to see your full turret loaded, you know, you can add a sub spindle to the machine as well. So once you've got your tools loaded, we're going to go ahead and go to the next tutorial, which is going to cover creating turning features for machining.